Hi everyone, and welcome back to our writing guide. When it comes to fountain pens from Asia, especially from Taiwan's brand, there are so many big names out there: Twisby, Opus 88, Penlux, Y Studio, and the list goes on. However, my eyes are set on a certain brand that's not as well known: Laban. I reached out to Laban, and they have kindly sent me their Cambridge 325 model with two ink bottles. And on that note, I would like to put out a disclaimer. I do not have any affiliate links with Laban, so all opinions in this video are my own. And I only use the link to their homepage, laban.com, to let you know where to find them and take a look around their offerings. Thanks to Laban for giving me the opportunity to review their pens and create content for you guys. Without further ado, let's start with a bit of history. Leban is a Taiwanese fountain pen manufacturer that started their business in 1981, and the company has been growing into the world's market ever since. They made a lot of decorative pieces, and most noticeably, one of their limited editions, Dragon Pens, was used by Pope Benedict XVI during one of his trips to Israel in 2009. In 2016, they launched their arguably most popular model, the 325, and also their first ink collection four years later in 2020. The pen comes in this paper box with a blue fabric texture on the outside, and they also gave you an orange branded bookmark and a sticker of the very same pen. The box slides open, revealing the pen in plastic wrapper. It also comes with a converter and an international cartridge so you could start filling it up for use immediately. From the first glance, they do have traits of the Italian school of fountain pen making with striking colors and eye-catching adornments all over the pens. The Finio has the Laban L in copper plate with two olive branches, very much play into their Greek theme. The clip is not spring-loaded, but firm enough to securely hold the pen in place. It's not the fanciest clip in the world, but it gets the job done. The plastic construction of the pen are really what surprised me. The plastic is thick and solid enough that you could feel the pen in your hand, and to my eyes and lenses, I couldn't really find any molding seams on the barrel and the cap. The 325 is the closest in size to a Mont Blanc 146, and it does have the same weight, even though it does not have the same filling mechanism. From a user perspective, and with the price you're paying for this model, it's reasonable to ask for a piston filler inside this pen, but this is really personal preference. The converter that comes with this pen also has the same issue that I got with a lot of cartridge converter pens, is that when inside the pen, it makes a lot of clicky noise when you tap the barrel. It does not affect the performance of the pen, but it is a minor pet peeve of mine. The clicking noise does make you wonder if anything is loose inside. Back to the barrel. The ivory section of the pen is still plastic, but casted in a way that gives you those darker streaks of colors similar to real ivory. In fact, these do age better than real ivory, as the discoloration is not as severe and is not too in your face. There are black areas on the section, and the end finial to further emphasize the ivory barrel, and it works really well with the design. The threading of the barrel was done smoothly without being intrusive. I barely felt the edges during long writing session, and that's a plus for me. The overall proportions of the barrel is done so that the Cambridge can be used without being capped, and the weight distribution is balanced for the everyday user. Let's now move on to the heart of the pen. The number six size Yovo Nib writes out of the box without any adjustments required. It has the usual Yovo scroll work, but added the name Laban and the usual four digit number indicating the height of some mountain. In this case, the number 3952 stands for Mao Yushan, the highest mountain in Taiwan. It offers little to no flex, but for an everyday writer, it would be ideal for many who are looking for a no throw, no flexi nib to write their daily notes. The fine nib puts out a decent amount of ink, and on Tomori River, it shows the sheening clearly on edges 
and it writes nicely without skipping during the long writing sessions. The Cambridge is a solid choice for people who are looking for a firm writer, but it is not without its issues. The converter works well as intended, yet the clicky sound might bother some of us picky users out there. The section might be a bit too long for those with smaller hands, and it could be slippery at times. If you're looking for an instrument to write for longer writing sessions, you might find that it gets fingerprints quite easily as the glossy finish was done so incredibly well. However, the price might be a pause for those who are looking at this pen since it is in the sub $200 range and there are a lot of other choices out there that offers a bit more than a steel nib and a converter. In conclusion, the 325 Cambridge is a weighty solid writer from Leban and I've been enjoying this pen ever since I received it from Leban team. Despite the drawbacks I've mentioned before, it is a gorgeous writer for those who wanting a writer that performs well while not being too distracting with all the fancy material. I will link Laban's website down in the description and the iCard of this video so you guys can take a look around for their offerings. They have a lot more than just black and white and also there are some interesting limited editions and materials for you to choose from. Once again, I would like to thank Laban's team for giving me the chance to review this pen. Articles and more photos will be available at writingguide.com. And if you enjoy the content, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to not miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching. And if you like the content, please check out the review playlist right here in the corner. I'll see you in the next one.